Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today is a very exciting day for the encyclopedia, as we are going to be examining one of the undisputed most powerful devil fruits in the series, the Goro Goro no Mi. The Goro Goro no Mi is a Logia type fruit that allows its user to conjure, manipulate and become electricity. It was consumed by the m, &M of One Piece, Gordonel, and first showcased in all of its terrifying glory during the Skypiea arc. This fruit takes its name directly from the Japanese word Goro Goro, which is an onomatopoeia used to represent the rumbling of thunder. And as a result, both Viz and Funimation, both rather reasonably, chose to dub the Goro Goro no Mi as the Rumble Rumble Fruit in English. And all right, let's begin scaling the mountain of stupidity that this fruit represents in terms of sheer power and versatility. First and foremost, it should still probably be stated that this is indeed a Logia fruit, and so the user essentially becomes electricity, which means that they are entirely intangible unless faced with sea stone, haki, or its natural counter rubber. Logia fruits are pretty rare in the grand scheme of things, so I do feel like it's important to point that out every time, because it's a ridiculous advantage in 99% of situations in the One Piece world, and probably closer to 100% in the real world. But in this case, the user is able to become and generate an incredible spectrum of electricity. As demonstrated in the series, the user can conjure anywhere between 1 to 200 million volts in any single attack. But it should also be stated that there's nothing really to say that the user can't just conjure less than 1 million volts as well. I mean, if the user just needed some sweet, sweet 240 volt power to run a kettle or something, then that would surely be achievable. Well, you know, whatever voltage you use in your country, be it 110, 220, or any other crazy number, it doesn't matter all that much so long as the user of the fruit can achieve it. Although the maximum is definitely capped at 200 million volts. And look, it should be stated that when it comes to electricity, volts aren't exactly all that. And the real damage is going to be caused by the current entering and frying a particular thing or being. However, high voltage is needed to get around resistance and allow current to, you know, do its thing. So I guess maybe think of voltage as a gun and current as a bullet. Now, sadly, we have no real indication of the amps the user of the Goro Goro no Mi is capable of, but by using this handy guide, along with the visual impacts in the series, it could easily be up to 10 amps, which makes this fruit capable of causing mass amounts of death almost effortlessly, even if most of the victims struck in one piece do survive anyway, because, well, manga. But essentially what we have is one of the most incredible offensive abilities in the entire world of devil fruits. You know, just throwing a lightning bolt at someone, because why not? But of course, this is certainly not the only way to make use of the fruit. For example, it is also entirely possible for the user to heat up the air around them to such an extent that it creates a thunderclap, which can be used to neutralize enemy attacks and create a powerful shockwave. That's also not the end of temperature potential either, as the user can raise the temperature of any conductors such as gold to the point where they melt, and in the specific case of gold, the user can then mold it as they please via the art of electromagnetism. And of course, the abilities of the Goro Goro no Mi can also be used to maximum effect in the extreme long range, as demonstrated by the iconic El Thor attack, in which the user materializes electricity in the sky above their target and then directs it straight down at that poor, poor individual, causing the immediate destruction of anything in its path. But as awe-inspiring as that is, we don't quite need to be so boring about it either, as the user is entirely capable of sculpting their own electricity into highly complex shapes, which in the series are shown to be mainly animals. But really, if you can conjure this level of detail, then really I don't think there's any limit to the electrical sculptures that you could create. I mean, if you wanted to strike down your enemy with a giant effigy of Condoriano, then that's well within your power to make happen. As is the ability to completely transform yourself into the guise of a thunder god, which is a super important point, really. Despite the amount of Logia users we've been shown in the series, they very rarely display their ability to physically morph themselves into an entirely new body. Although I guess that both times I can recall it happening, it resulted in a near instantaneous smackdown from Luffy. So uh, its usage is really cool, but debatably effective at higher levels of combat. But combat isn't everything, and it would be foolish to ignore the sheer speed of travel that the Goro Goro no Mi allows the user to attain. Now, sadly, there's no simple answer to the question of how fast is lightning, because lightning itself is a sequence of events. But I guess what we're focused on here is what's called the return stroke, which is estimated to be able to travel at roughly 100,000 kilometers per second, which is, you know, roughly a third of the speed of light. But we do run into problems there because there is a maximum distance that lightning can travel before dissipating, which in the real world is between eight to 16 kilometers from a storm, which I imagine is why Enel needed the arc maxim to travel to the moon. With that said though, the user can essentially teleport themselves within an immediate radius of 16 kilometers at most. And once that's happened, then they can simply just do it again. And if that action were to take exactly one second each time, then you'd be able to get from one coast of the United States to the other in under three minutes. Furthermore, the fruit also has some nice surprise uses, such as
is very potentially saving you from death in, you know, the very odd circumstance that you succumb to it. Basically, the user of the Goro Goro no Mi can use their electricity to jumpstart their heart upon entering cardiac arrest, making them even more difficult to deal with than they already are. And with that, let's examine the use of the Goro Goro no Mi as catered to our Lord and Savior God Enel. First of all, let's address that with all of the aforementioned abilities, Enel, quite understandably, began referring to himself as a god, and even believing it because that's just what this fruit does. Upon consumption, you are an immediate lightning god with no real caveats. Enel never expressed any sort of strain when using the fruit, meaning that all of these devastating attacks can be summoned at no real cost to the user. But Enel wasn't happy at just that, because he went to the trouble of constructing the Arc Maxim to produce apocalyptic scale power. And combining that arc with the Goro Goro no Mi was actually a really brilliant thing to do. And I don't think anybody ever gives Enel the credit he deserves for his ridiculous knowledge in the realm of engineering. And one other thing this arrogant prick had going for him was his natural gift of observation haki, which he knew as mantra. So not only that, but his haki was enhanced heavily by the Goro Goro no Mi, which allowed him to listen to electrical sound waves that traverse the air, essentially combining with observation haki to give him an omniscient radar, further enforcing his belief of godhood. However, Enel's issue is that he relied pretty much entirely on the instant benefits of the fruit, which while great, led him to grow arrogant, and that's why he was defeated at the first sign of resistance to his abilities in the character of Monkey D. Luffy. I feel like if Enel had bothered to train seriously, then he would have been one of the most fearsome presences in the One Piece world. And before anyone tries to tell me that Enel wasn't weak, consider this. He was gifted the only devil fruit in existence so far that has been said to make the user practically invincible, and he had an incredible natural talent in observation haki, and yet he still lost to a pre-time skip, pre-haki, pre-gear Luffy. Yeah, the dude was pretty weak. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a lightning human. Whether it's particularly useful or not, there is the potential for the user of the Goro Goro no Mi to create the phenomenon of ball lightning, which can be several meters in diameter. As for how one would go about creating it, I can't really tell you and neither can anyone at this point in human history. But if you were so inclined for a fun arts and crafts object, then it's very important to know that it is entirely possible to petrify lightning by making it come into contact with sand, which creates a kind of glass known as fulgurite. Very delicate, but very, very cool. And I know that I'd probably spend far, far too much time trying to create these. To put it simply, what we have here is by far the most overpowered fruit examined in the encyclopedia thus far, and quite possibly the most overpowered fruit that we will ever examine. I'm not gonna get into the debate about the Goro Goro no Mi versus the Pika Pika no Mi here. It's an interesting discussion, but one best for another video. But for now, this fruit for all intents and purposes does transform you into a godlike being. And the power granted to you seems to come at no cost whatsoever. You're just instantly one of the most powerful people on the planet. And with some serious training, then the potential to become a Yonko or even the Pirate King is well within reach. And yes, it does have a weakness to rubber, sea stone and armament haki, but the latter two apply to all devil fruits and encountering someone with a body made of rubber just isn't a common enough occurrence to detract from this fruit selling features. And so it receives a perfect score and there should not be a single person in this world who would hesitate to eat it. And with that, we are going to commit the Goro Goro no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, we'll be changing up the pace and slowing things down a bit, a fair bit actually, as we examine the ever crazy Noro Noro no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Goro Goro no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.